All right, let's take a look at one example where the counting actually gets pretty big pretty fast. All right, so suppose that we have six friends that are going to be going to a costume party, and they're ordering costumes from a catalog. The catalog lists 13 different costumes. And so we want each friend to choose a costume from the list of 13. Here's the question. What is the probability that at least two friends will choose the same costume? So what's the probability that at least two friends choose the same costume? So there's the question. Probability that at least two friends choose the same costume. Well, this is actually really, really hard. So instead, when you're faced with a really hard problem, sometimes you should try to not do it and do something else. Well, remember this fundamental principle that if we know the probability of something, then we can get the probability that the opposite thing happens by taking one minus the probability. Well, the probability of at least two friends choosing the same costume is really tricky because there's lots of ways that can happen. At least two friends means that two people can have the same costume, or three people can have the same costume, or four people can have the same costume, or all five people can have the same costume, or everyone, all six of them can have the same costume. And if only if three people have the same costume, which three? It could be Mary, Tom, or Jane, or it could be Jane, Tom, and Carol, and so forth. So there's lots of ways. It's just too, too much. Instead, let's do the opposite question. So what's the opposite? So what's the opposite of... It's not the case that at least two people, two friends choose the same costume. It doesn't happen that at least two friends choose the same costume. If you think about what that means grammatically, it means that everyone chooses a different costume because there are no two costumes that are the same. It's not the case that at least two people have the same costume. So now, let's first find the probability that all choose different costumes. So let's find the probability that all choose different costumes. And then we'll take that answer and look at 1 minus that number to get the harder probability. OK, so let's hold off on this question for a second. And now look at this question, which I claim is a little bit easier. So the probability that they all choose different costumes. First of all, we're going to actually figure out what's the probability that given 13, given, given 13 possibilities, how many different ways can we have uh, six people choose in total, in total. What's the total number? What's the total sample size? Well, the total sample size is easy to see because the first person can choose any one of the, the 13, the next person can choose any one of the 13, so forth down the line. So we actually have 13 to the sixth power. That's the total number of ways of having six people choose from 13 costumes with no restrictions, no rules, just right. Now, let's see. So the denominator is going to be 13 to the 6th power, because all possible ways of having 6 people choose from 13 is going to be you take 13 times 13 times 13 times 13 6 times. It's the fundamental counting principle. Now the harder question is, we want them now to look at successful pickings. Successful pickings means that they all choose different costumes. That means that I have 13 things and I have 6 people picking, but I don't want anyone to pick the same one as someone else. So therefore, what do I have? Order matters, I have a permutation. Because I want to make sure I'm going to go in, pick something, take it out, make sure that someone else doesn't pick that same thing, and so forth. So order matters. And so what I have here is 13 choose 6, and order actually matters. So what does this equal? Well, now we have to figure this out. Let me do a little side calculation as to 13 choose 6. 13 choose 6, where order matters, is going to be 13 factorial over the difference 13 minus 6, which is 7 factorial. So let's first of all just work that out. What in the world is that? Well, that's going to be 13 times 12 times 11 times 10 times 9 times 8 times 7 all the way down to 1. So that's actually 7 factorial. And I see that we can simplify this because the 7 factorials go away. And so what I see now, if I come back to here, is 13 times 12 times 11 times 10 times 9 times 8, all divided by uh, 13 to the 6th power. And that works out to be approximately, if you work it on a calculator, 0 0.256. So the probability of all 
choosing different costumes as that. That wasn't the question. The question was the opposite. At least two friends choose the same costume. So the answer to this question is going to, in fact, be equals 1 minus this probability. And what is that? Well, that works out to be 0 0.744. So you can see that if you've got, 12, if you've got, um, if you've got six people and they're going to be choosing from 13 possibilities, then in fact, it's fairly likely that we are going to actually have at least two of them have a match. It might seem a little surprising at first, but if you actually try this, actually get you know, five of your friends, find a catalog where you have 13 things in it, and ask each one to secretly, so you know, no one does conspiracies here, secretly just pick one, you will see that a little bit more often than not, you will expect to have at least two people choose the same costume. Again, a new insight into something that's a little bit surprising, using the power of probability. I'll see you soon.